From cutting-edge gene therapies to designer babies and human cloning, advances in medicine and genetics are sparking debates and challenging what it means to be human. But many of these same arguments began four decades ago, when for the first time in history, scientists brought the magic of human conception out of the bedroom and into the laboratory. Okay, not like that. I'm talking about in vitro fertilization, or IVF for short. And when it was first proposed, the public panicked. And many scientists warned that we should beware the test tube babies. But today, more than 5 million IVF births later, there's seemingly not much to beware about them at all. Or maybe these so-called test tube babies have us right where they want us. Assuming that's not the case, how did we get it so wrong? Our story begins in the 1960s with a British biologist by the name of Robert Edwards. Edwards and his wife had befriended a couple who had been unable to have children of their own, and Edwards wanted to help. He was good like that. So he joined forces with Dr. Patrick Steptoe, and the duo set out to cure human infertility. This was the game plan. Edwards and Steptoe would retrieve an egg from a woman, place said egg in a Petri dish, fertilize that egg, and then return the egg to a mother-to-be so it could finish developing like any conventional pregnancy. This, in a nutshell, is in vitro fertilization. But as news of Edwards and Steptoe's efforts spread, it was met by skepticism and serious concern, not just by the public, but by respected members of the scientific community too. Some worried that creating so-called Franken-babies in a lab would lead us down a path to a dark dystopian future, like something out of a sci-fi novel. In fact, James Watson, the famed co-discoverer of DNA, predicted that all hell would break loose, politically and morally, all over the world if IVF were successful. Leon Cass and Paul Ramsey, professors at the University of Chicago and Princeton, they feared that IVF would lead to breeding people in laboratories and human cloning. The British Medical Association took things even further by directly accusing Edwards and Steptoe of actually cloning humans. Edwards would eventually sue them twice for defamation and win. So everyone was coming after these guys, but they kept going. And after eight years of experimentation and fighting off critics, Edwards and Steptoe made a huge announcement. They'd succeeded. A young woman named Leslie Brown had been impregnated via IVF, and the first baby ever conceived outside of the womb was on its way. A media frenzy erupted. Reporters from around the world swarmed the hospital where Leslie was preparing to give birth. A few even managed to sneak in disguised as janitors and priests. What would this baby look like? Would it be tragically malformed? Was it a monster? Nah, it's just a baby. On July 25th, 1978, Edwards and Steptoe delivered Louise Joy Brown. And by all objective measures, she was super cute and totally normal. Louise's birth paved the way for five million healthy IVF babies and counting. And these days, the procedure is so routine, it's even been performed live on the Today Show. For his efforts, Robert Edwards would win the Nobel Prize in 2010. And when he did, the Nobel Committee was flooded with personal messages from grateful families. And it's no wonder. These families might have been forever incomplete if Edwards and Steptoe had given up on IVF in the face of criticism. Look, new technologies often have risks worth considering. But as Edwards himself pointed out, electricity is a good thing, regardless of its leading to the invention of the electric chair. Debates about the next great medical breakthroughs will have to be settled on their own merits. But when it comes to IVF, the millions of families it made whole, and the dire predictions that never panned out, even some of the brightest minds appear to have gotten it wrong. Or did they? Yeah.